Kevin Don here with a new weekly injection of fitness facts and fallacies. This week, I'm going to talk about the ongoing avoidant culture in fitness and wellness and how that might not be the best way to approach things. It shouldn't come as a great surprise that most, although not all, advice that we consume on a daily basis is actually trying to sell you something. Companies need to make money to preserve and expand their existence. Therefore, at some point, revenue has to be generated. So in a lot of cases, the information being shared is biased due to the fact it needs to fit a specific narrative. This leads someone on a journey from cold to warm to hot and eventually becoming a sale. Now, I've seen coaches or personal trainers come out with the line that they want their clients to become completely autonomous and no longer need them. This is false. Think about it for a minute. If a personal trainer made a client totally independent autonomous, their ability to earn money would disappear and their business would collapse. Once we know that we're fish being baited, we begin to see some common themes in the approaches being made to us. I was thinking about this last night. I saw a post from a fitness influencer I know. The post was a video of her trying to pull a pair of jeans on over her derriere in just her underwear. The caption was completely unrelated. Looking through a few of her posts, this was a theme, where the videos were all her in her underwear, and the caption was about strength training or aerobic work. This isn't anything new. I'm sure you've all heard the phrase, sex sells. It's really quite apparent and obvious when we see it. But there's another sales tactic that might not be so obvious to you. It's very prevalent in fitness and really quite damaging, and it's selling by fear. Now, I recently heard someone call it fear porn. I can't say I disagree. You've definitely seen it before. Squats are bad for your knees. Deadlifts are bad for your back. Sugar causes cancer. In the last few years, I've never seen so much information about things we are doing wrong. We're eating the wrong foods. We're eating them at the wrong time of day. We're chewing them the wrong number of times. Your sleeping position is wrong. Your sleeping temperature is wrong. Your shower temperature is wrong. Deodorants are bad. Toothpaste is evil. You run wrong. You lift wrong. You recover wrong. And you breathe wrong. All of these wrongs have a potential deadly outcome. I saw a post this week which declared these facts. If you don't move daily, you will decay faster. If you don't eat real food, you will get sick. And if you don't sleep well, you will experience cognitive decline. Now, Whilst we know there are some correlations between these things, we cannot declare them as fact, especially not when the solution to these problems is that person's program, webinar, ebook, or certification course that you need to apply for to see if you qualify. The only qualification for getting on one of these courses is that you have enough money to pay for it. It's called fear-mongering. Most of the fear sales brigade are going to focus on avoidance or subtraction. They'll tell you you need to reset your gut by avoiding dairy, avoiding spices, avoiding seed oils. You need to reset your body by cold water therapy and water fasting. I would say that most problems are actually caused not by needing to remove things, but by needing to add things. The paradigm needs to shift because the fear mongers have been standing on their soapbox declaring that there are bad foods, bad movements, and bad ways of doing things. The reality is you don't have a dairy digestion issue because dairy is inherently bad. You have a dairy digestion issue because you lack lactase, the enzyme required to break lactose down. Deadlifts aren't bad for your back. Deadlifting with really bad technique is bad for your back. In fact, if you have a weak back, adding more back work will be beneficial. The only thing you need to reset here is the people that you follow and get information from. On this podcast, I've said there's a hierarchy of training. The deadlifts should come before cleans and motor control should come before maximal contraction. Does this mean that trying to learn to clean before learning the deadlift is dangerous? No. It's just harder to learn because you don't have the motor control. And it's going to be real hard to express a maximal explosive event without your nervous system being conditioned towards that. Is it wrong? No. 
It's just not optimal. Anytime you see things being labeled as flat out wrong, with absolute certainty, it should set your spidey senses tingling. Because in the absence of disease or injury, there's no such thing. A more holistic and objective approach is always good, but unfortunately, this fire of subjective absolutes is actually being fueled most of the time by the end users, because humans just want straight answers. You won't believe the number of eye rolls I've had from clients or coaches that come to me for education when they ask me a question and the answer is, "Mm, well, maybe, because no one wants to hear that. They want black and white, do this and you get that. But the reality is never that simple. And actually, the best information is going to be the most general answer. Because it really is a maybe. Each person is different. Each situation is different. And the answers are nuanced. Unless the person giving the recommendation is in possession of enough data to make a definitive claim. Here's an example. Kevin. I want to train for a powerlifting meet. Should I keep doing long aerobic work like running, rowing, or swimming three times a week? No, you shouldn't. But this does not mean that aerobic work three times a week is bad. It's just not advisable at this moment in time for you. Someone else might be looking for health. They're not peaking for a sporting event. And in that case, absolutely, aerobic work alongside strength work is a great idea. But if you just said to me, Kevin, should I do aerobic work alongside strength? My answer would be, I don't know, maybe. I need more information. So you see that, hey guys, YouTube and Instagram Reels people are not in the position to make these sweeping claims. They don't have enough data. But what they are doing is creating a culture of fear resulting in avoidance of foods, avoidance of movement, avoidance of entire modalities of training. As always, The best way to train and be fit is to expose yourself to as many different motor patterns as possible in as many different degrees of freedom as possible. Recover from that as optimally as possible by getting rest and relaxation. Eat as many different nutrients as possible across a broad spectrum. Avoiding movements, demonizing foods, and removing things like meat, dairy, running, or squatting because an influential figure said so is going to result in narrowing your exposure to things that could bring you so much joy and wellness to such a tiny sliver of potential. Add more things to your life and broaden your fitness landscape instead. Get Fit Guy is a quick and dirty tips podcast. Thanks to the team at Quick and Dirty Tips, Adam Cecil, Morgan Christensen, Holly Hutchings, and Davina Tomlin. Our intern is Cameron Lacey. I'm your host, Kevin Dunn. If you have a question for me, Leave me a voicemail at 510-353-3104 or send me an email at getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. For more information about the show, visit quickanddirtytips.com or check out the show notes in your podcast app.